The U.S. Navy has positioned an aircraft carrier off the coast of Yemen into the Gulf of Aden following recent attacks from the Iran-backed terrorist group, the Houthis. Now, to talk about this in more detail is our foreign affairs expert, Lisa Daftari, who joins us once again from Los Angeles. Lisa, the U.S. Navy has taken this measure against the Houthis, who have allegedly been disrupting international shipping in the Red Sea and Persian Gulf with daily attacks against commercial vessels? Yes, yeah, so this has been ongoing. Um, and uh, just to separate this into a more macro um, level, the Iran-backed insurgencies in the Middle East, we're talking about Syria, Iraq, and Yemen, so I'm separating it from the war against Israel, have hit U.S. assets and European assets more than 90 times in the last two months since the Hamas massacre on October 7th. Now, the White House is hope, trying This is trying to kind of hope that this goes away on its own, uh, like, a, like a pesky mosquito, and not wanting to escalate things, to drag itself into a war, because we all know the head of the dragon is Iran's regime, who is controlling both aspects of the war, the insurgencies against the U.S. and, and European allies, and also against uh, Hamas and Hezbollah and possibly Islamic Jihad against Israel. Um, now, you know, the best way to deter an enemy is to not allow them to begin flexing to begin with, uh, but that's too late for the United States, for the West in general. And now we see uh, the Houthis uh, hitting the U.S. assets. We see Syria, we see Iraq, of course, Hezbollah and Hamas getting involved on, on the uh, Israel front. Uh, and so, yeah, you're seeing, you know, we're, we're, we're parking our carriers, which is, um, you know, a, a good move by the United States in order to show some leadership and, and, and deterrence. But will it work this late in the game is the question. Will it actually deter uh, Iran's regime from backing down from this master plan that it has? Now, the U.S. Central Command says an American warship operating in the Red Sea, Lisa, ended up shooting down around 14 attack drones that were launched from Yemen. Yeah, now imagine. Now, again, the United States is not committed to firing back against Yemen. So any headline you're seeing is probably, you know, after 10 to 1, meaning it's 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 taken a while for them to even consider um, this, again, more than just the pesky mosquito that just keeps coming back and buzzing and buzzing and buzzing and trying to pr uh, provoke an attack by the United States. Uh, the Biden administration is in a very, very precarious situation, obviously. Um, the lowest uh, approval ratings of all time. Uh, you have wars going on in, in many different parts, and you have almost wars. You have basically um, many heated uh, uh, crises going on in different parts of the world. And of course, we're coming up against the 2024 election. So the Biden administration is doing its best to separate itself from any wars, trying to clean its hands of any um, escalations, particularly in the Middle East, particularly uh, in, you know, against uh, whether it's involving itself in the war uh, with Israel or getting involved in its own uh, escalations with these insurgencies that are supported by Iran's regime. And Lisa, the Israel Defense Forces announced the discovery of one of the largest tunnels built by the terrorist group Hamas. The vast subterranean structure was located near the Erez border, a crossing located in the northern part of Gaza. It spans well over four kilometers, and apparently it was used by Gazans on a daily basis? Daily basis. Now, this is for all of those who want to talk about blockades. And I was on a show last week, Hal, where the host was trying to convince me of, of uh, caloric restrictions on Gazans, and it's Israel's fault that, that the Gazans are hungry. This is the reason the Gazans are hungry, because every penny that Hamas has had has spent on war, on terrorism, on tunnels, on missiles. Uh, and, you know, it, it's horrific. If you've seen the footage of this tunnel, two and a half miles long, uh, it's, it's an actual tunnel. Cars can, can fit through it. I mean, it, they've used this, um, obviously, for uh, terror purposes, to hide, to, uh, you know, kind of um, transport back and forth to get into Israel. Of course, we saw that on October 7th. And that is why this ground operation by Israel is so complicated. That's why it's taking so long. And again, remember the human shields. They are in the tunnels. They're in the hospitals. They're in the schools. They're in the mosques. Um, this is all Hamas's fault. And I think it's, it's, it's very frustrating to see um, world opinion shift 
because people don't realize or don't want to accept or don't want to hear these realities. When you look at these tunnels and you realize how complex uh, these terror organizations have become, how much money they have had to put into this war, how much money they have had to put into their terror infrastructures, uh, then you understand more why the Palestinian people, just like the Israelis, are victims of Hamas and their leadership uh, that, again, are, are spending the people's money on, on terrorism and instead of, of improving the quality of life over there. The White House says U.S. President Joe Biden stands by his elusive two-state solution to the Gaza war, Lisa. This despite public disagreements with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Biden is backing control by the Palestinian Authority? This, it, it, it's actually very tone deaf, pal, when you think about it. Right now, Israel is fighting an existential threat, meaning Hamas has sworn that it not only should not one Israeli exist, not only should the state of Israel not exist, but they are uh, in their charter are after Jews to fight and kill Jews, period. Now, isn't it tone deaf for the White House to come along and push a policy of two states living side by side in harmony, that would be wonderful, but it could never happen, as we can see the reality on the ground. Um, you could also look at the different um, attempts of jihad uh, throughout the world. We're seeing it all over, including in Canada, including in Europe, including in the United States. Hate crimes rising uh, hundreds of percents, um, escalating and, and exponentially growing um, since the war has started. And of course, that just, again, proves that they are not looking to live side by side with Jews or believe in the state of Israel. When they say from the river to the sea, that is not a call for coexistence. There's a report surfacing by the Washington Free Beacon that the Biden administration has given $34 million to confidential aid groups in Gaza. But military analysts, Lisa, are warning that the money could end up in the hands of Hamas. Yeah, absolutely. When there's no accountability, on the, again, taxpayer money uh, that is going to these groups, why are we calling them confidential groups? Why aren't we transparent about where they're going? Why isn't there a vetting system as to where this money is going? If if we believe that there's a good chance this will hand, end up in, in terrorist hands, Taxpayers deserve more than that than to know where their money is going. And of course, when you're looking at the larger scale, when you see the Biden administration and, and President Biden himself uh, standing at the podium and offering some sort of support for Israel and its right to defend itself, but then giving money to those who are the enemies of Israel and do not want to see um, Israel's uh, existence any longer. It's it's kind of um, it, it, uh, a, a very um, different uh picture than the one that the Biden administration is, is hoping to paint. So a lot of flip-flopping here, a lot of different things, but thank God for these you know, investigative reports that bring out a lot of these uh, realities, and hopefully that the Biden administration will be pushed to answer uh, some of these questions. Yeah, as journalists, we got to hold the government to account. Now, Lisa, over the weekend, Iran announced that it executed a man convicted of spying for Israel's Mossad intelligence agency. The unnamed man was hanged at the Sahedin Central Prison in the southeastern part of Iran. Run? So these trumped up charges are very common for Iran's regime. And I think what people don't know is that over the last two months, when everyone's attention has been on the Israel-Hamas war, how many innocent individuals have been hanged by uh, Iran's regime, and many of them on these trumped up charges, whether it's it's spying for the United States, spying for the enemy, um, enemy of the state, and of course, um, spying for Israel uh, being a very popular uh, charge. Um, very, very horrific. Again, this points to U.S. policy, it points to the policy of the West and the world in not uh, holding Iran's regime to account, um, you know, loosening sanctions that are vital to keeping Iran's regime, um, you know, limited and, and freezing their assets, but then, uh, you know, allowing them to go on and, 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 and to hang and execute in, innocent people. I mean, their human rights abuses are, are on the list of many, 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 many egregious violations, including, you know, giving money to all these terror organizations, you know, expanding their influence uh, in the region. Uh, and of course, going on with their weapons program. If the West truly cared about limiting Iran's regime, it would totally change its policy here, here on forward. What's the latest with the $6 billion that was released by the Biden administration and those Iranian assets? And they were talking about potentially refreezing some of those assets. What's the latest there? 
Correct. There is legislation to freeze uh, the six billion dollars because of uh, what has been obviously brought to light with Iran's regime being responsible for funding and not only funding but training Hamas militants to go into Israel on October seventh. Now, this was brought by uh, some Republicans. I know that there are the Democrats who who believe that Iran's regime should be um, punished and there should be penalties against them uh, as well. Uh, what I always bring to light, Hal, is that we can. Put aside the, the $6 billion. What's more egregious is that the Biden administration has removed vital sanctions from Iran's regime that has allowed it to sell oil and bring in its own revenue. So over the last three years of the Biden administration, the Iran regime has brought in 60 to $90 billion in oil revenue on its own. Wow. So the $6 billion uh, that was given on top of this lopsided prisoner exchange, we already know it was an unfair deal to begin with, but the $6 billion that was given on top really doesn't even come into question because that check... As many have, have pointed out, it wasn't cashed, it wasn't given to them yet, and now it's in question to freeze that again. But to, to talk about the larger issue here is that the, the money should not be frozen. After During this war, another $10 billion was uh, um, given to, I should say, unfrozen uh, by, by the United States, giving them permission to uh, cash in on that as well. So why are we enriching the regime is the question. Why are we allowing them to move forward, to put more money into global terror uh, and, and to embolden them more than anything else, to embolden them? Uh, if I were sitting in, in Iran's regime right now, I would think I can play out the clock while President Biden is in office, there will be no penalties against Iran's regime uh, and to carry out the whatever nefarious uh, agenda that they have left. You know, we've talked about the rising tensions, obviously, in the Middle East, what's happened in Ukraine with the war with Russia. And Lisa, now there's word that a U.S. nuclear-powered sub has arrived in South Korea amid serious concerns that North Korea could launch an international ballistic missile this month. Right. That is that is the fear, because North Korea has definitely made it known to the world that it is testing missiles, um, not so successfully, but but nonetheless, the uh, the the motivation is there. Um, again, with foreign policy, you want to have a strong stance so that your enemies do not begin uh, flexing to begin with, not to deter once you already believe that uh, that 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 the action is coming. So in this case, again, the United States moving to deter, to kind of prevent anything from escalating. But our enemies are watching very, very closely. Like you said, Hal, if you look around the globe, whether it's Russia, China, Iran's regime, whether it's Hamas or Hezbollah, uh, any one of them, and you can add North Korea to that list, um, they know that this is a very weak administration, particularly when it comes to foreign policy. So it's it, there's no coincidence here that the bad kids are behaving badly, and they know that they have a certain amount of time um, while President Biden is still in office. You know, there's also a growing concern that terrorists are crossing America's southern border and entering the country illegally. But according to a sheriff in Arizona, Mark Lamb, Lisa, the terrorists have already arrived. He says the devil is coming through the back door. Absolutely. And we've had reports about this at the foreign desk as well. How many... Um, thousands, I should say, have been caught at the border who are on the FBI's most wanted list. Now, we're not even talking about the getaways, those who got away, um, meaning that they have not been referenced, uh, cross-referenced with, with the list or the FBI's most wanted, or they never made it onto the FBI's most wanted. But this goes to the, the larger point that we want to keep our homeland safe. And when we talk about legal versus illegal immigration, not leaving the border open the way that we have, this is a vulnerability for all of us, including Canada, because we know that they, they move north, north word once they get into the country here. Uh, very, very important to pay attention to this, particularly as we know that there is a threat. Uh, FBI agents are warning that there has never been a larger threat against the, the U.S. mainland. They're looking at uh, Hamas or, or potentially, um, you know, kind of do-it-yourself uh, lone wolf type uh, terrorists that are, are emboldened and trained and paid for by Iran's regime. We know that they are not only the number one state sponsor of terror, but they are also the number one sponsor of of suicide bombers and those who are the lone wolves, right? Um, very important to not give our enemies a way in. Why are people from places like Iran's regime in Afghanistan and Syria entering from our southern border? It's not just people from uh, impoverished South American countries. So when you look at these facts, you know that there is an issue where there's a vulnerability. And uh, unfortunately, the only people who you hear are either people who left border control because they couldn't take it anymore, uh, or the uh, leadership at the border. So you're looking at states like Arizona and Texas who are leading the charge and letting the, the Biden administration know that uh, this is enough is enough. 
So Lisa, before we let you go, and we'll talk to you again in the new year, and I'm hoping you and your family have a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. Let's talk about what's happening with former U.S. President Donald Trump and all those legal troubles. What's the latest there? My goodness. <laughs> uh, well, a lot of his cases have been thrown out, which kind of shows that our legal system is still working. You can't just bring, uh, you know, uh, bogus charges against people. But he, you know, he still has a, a ways to go. Um, whether or not he will be on the ballot, I think, is everyone's question. Uh, here in the United States, we look at, you know, um, who will be the Democrat nominee? Will it be Joe Biden or will he step down? Um, or will it uh, and will will the Republican, uh, you know, coronation go to Donald Trump? So so he hasn't been at any, any of the debates. He's not really, um, you know, putting out any kind of um, talking points the way that you're seeing other candidates do so. But if you look at the polls, how on the left, right, center, all the polls still indicate that Donald Trump would have a very, very good shot at winning uh, if the elections were held today. So that's pretty, pretty uh, significant. Again, um, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about someone who has not been uh, visible in the sense of, of running for office. He's been visible in many other ways, but not such great ones, too, when you look at it. But um, he has a following. He has he has support. And I think a lot of people stand by him um, regardless and are, are hoping that they will see him on the ballot. You know, it's interesting. The polls here in Canada suggest if an election was held here today in Canada, Pierre Polyev and the Conservative Party of Canada would win in a landslide. But again, those are just polls. We'll have to actually see what happens. Come election time, yeah, we're right? We're seeing a lot of trends moving to to uh, conservative candidates. I think a lot of of of, of sane people who are whether in in the middle, right, or left of, of center uh, are are seeing a lot of changes that they see from 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 the left and uh, are moving more towards conservative candidates. So let's see. She's the host of the Foreign Desk and our foreign affairs expert, Lisa. Thanks so much for joining us today from Los Angeles. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year.